Hello, welcome back to my channel. Are you ready for a month of drawing every day? Because I'm kind of still trying to figure out if it's a good idea or not. Uh... Spoiler alert, I did not complete the challenge, but I did create 16 artworks that I am very proud of. I'm Hello Kitty right now because it's Halloween. Clear orange juice? Oh, it's empty. Let's take a look into my sketchbook and rewind back to October 1st. Okay, so why am I participating in Peachtober this year, which is the prompt list I'm following? Well, one, I really love Shan at Furry Little Peach. She's one of my biggest inspirations. And two, like the bragging rights that come with finishing in Inktober. Like, could you imagine? I would never let anyone forget that I finished a prompt. Um, but seriously, these are my goals for this month and what I want to accomplish in the next 31 days. First, I really want to improve my gouache painting skills. And second, I want to improve my storytelling skills and make pieces that have a really clear story. Three, I want to up my social media game, Fire Emoji. I want to make fire painting reels this month. And four, I really want to find new artists and interact with the amazing community that comes with the whole Peachtober, Inktober thing. Yeah, I love finding and supporting new artists. So with that said, this is what I'm gonna be using this month. So I kind of just jumped into painting without any prior planning to what I wanted to do. And I honestly kind of like that better because each day I kind of was inspired by a new idea. So what I did was sketch the sketches out in my sketchbook and then I would later refine those sketches and transfer it onto a piece of watercolor paper and then paint it. I used a mix of Holbein acrylic gouache and Windsor Newton watercolor gouache. I like both for different reasons. I love the Windsor Newton watercolor gouache though. I just love what, how it looks like, how it blends. And yeah, I just kind of started. I was really motivated these first few days. I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into my process in a minute, but if you guys do wanna see my quote unquote messy sketchbook with all my Inktober sketches, I am doing a sketchbook tour over on Patreon. So I'm giving myself a little plug here. If you're interested in seeing it, it's on my $6 tier and it's part of like my monthly video. So definitely check that out if you're interested on in seeing more of the process behind this stuff. stuck on what to draw for Tiger, which is the prompt for day number four. I usually start off with a brainstorm in my sketchbook. And I kind of just like sketch like random things and find an idea that sticks, but I can't think of anything right now. <laughs> tired right now and I don't know if I should paint it now or paint it in the morning but I know like in the morning I might not wake up but the prompt is bow for tomorrow and I really like this idea of this girl like this little hunter girl and her like companion pigeon are in the woods and then 
her pigeon is so happy that he shot a arrow through a mushroom and she's like what the heck that's like not what we we're trying to do it's like just a mushroom you could have just like picked it up if you have been following my art i am not a drawer of humans i just find them so hard to draw so i think during this challenge i also wanted to start incorporating more of that into my work i don't know it's 8 p.m right now like i should go to bed i have chocolate milk in here right now so good i don't know what to do okay or i'll paint and watch over the garden wall because i just started that while i was watching dinner and i was like well why did i not start this show sooner sounds like a good time okay this is the setup right now i have my phone on a tripod i want to do more of like a time lapse type video so i'm doing it from above this time and then i'm going to film most of the process it's balancing on my garbage can. I have like this additional light to add more light over here. And then, yeah, I've got my gouache. And I guess I'm gonna start painting now. see the flow of everything happening like I wrote down all my ideas here I really like the idea of having something living inside of the tree I really wanted to have something that had a lot of movement and then I started drawing these little tree forest goblins and I really really like them and I wanted to incorporate them into today's drawing I really like the flow of these roots right here so then moving here, I did one tree and then just like a view of all these little goblins. And then I started doing like more of a composition sketch. I want to have like clear line work when I start painting. I did move it over to Procreate on my iPad. This is going to be my final line work. And what I did, I know a lot of people like light box on their iPad, but I find it always moves around. So I just took the watercolor paper that I'm using and I just sent this to myself and then printed out the line work on the paper I'm using. I don't know why I didn't think about doing this before. I think I'm gonna see how this works out. Like I'm sure it's gonna be fine. I'm process this whole thing took me about an hour and a half, I think. And the brush I'm using here is a Princeton round eight brush. I pretty much use it for like almost everything. This little point is like really, really small so you could get in a lot of details with it. I like the number six flat brush. This one's nice. This also Princeton half inch angled shader. I really like this Princeton brand and they're pretty inexpensive. I also have a number three, but I really like this number eight, like just cause the tip is so pointy. always save colored pencils until the end so once I'm happy with how the paint looks I'll add in little details and just like refine things with colored pencils and yeah I think it just adds like a nice texture and it just looks you know 
nice and sketchy and stuff. I don't know how to describe it. I just like it. It is day six and I officially am losing steam. <laughs> it's six o'clock right now and I haven't started the next painting for tomorrow. And just like the thought of setting up my camera to make a reel and like painting for two hours right now does not sound ideal. Love painting, but I'm just, sometimes you gotta be in the mood. Now, I'm not sure if I should like force myself to do it. I think this is like the furthest I've gone up around probably day six or day seven, but maybe, maybe I should just do it. Should I just do it? Tomorrow's theme is potion. I was thinking maybe I should just use my October Patreon print because I haven't shared that on Instagram yet and it has potions in it. Not using traditional media. Maybe I'm being too hard on myself. I don't know. Maybe I'll just do it. Painting every day is hard. I'm really proud of myself for doing all of them this week, except for the one for potion, but I kind of like slid the potion theme into this one as well. First check-in. Initial thoughts, this is really hard. It is really hard to sit and paint every single day. To all of you guys who are doing any version of Inktober while you're also like working a full-time job, you guys like rock, like so amazing. Really fun pushing myself and coming up with ideas every day. Spending two to four hours every day brainstorming, sketching, painting, and then filming that. It takes me 30 to 45 minutes to edit the reel and then post that and then yada yada. If I did it, if I did it differently, I would have started a week before or something and had like a couple paintings already set up so that each day I could like get a little further. And I think next week I'm gonna try to do two a day if I can. Loving using gouache and colored pencils with these, playing around with texture, playing around with color a little bit more. Peak would be that Shan reposted my tree one on the Peachtober account so that was really exciting and I'm really happy that like she recognized my art she's so amazing and I think my pit would be finding songs that match with the reel I think that part takes a lot of time because I have to find like a song that fits with Instagram and TikTok so yeah that's my pit I'm gonna catch up and do today's prompt now and Today's prompt is Boulder. It was thinking while I was in the shower, I was thinking of an idea I could do. And I drew these monsters at Drink and Draw and like we were just like sketching stuff and like drawing monsters. And I really like the look of these guys and I think I could put them in an illustration. I didn't finish today's because my parents told me that we had to go to Maryland to visit my cousins for the next two days. So I'm gonna pack up my stuff and do like a travel, travel art supply type situation. So I'm gonna have to bring all my paints and stuff and then maybe I can paint with my little cousins. They love, they love painting and stuff. So maybe I'll make them do a prompt.
spooky vibes. The Inktober fatigue is getting real, guys. Day 12 today, and I just got back from being in Maryland. And yeah, it's really hard to keep up with if you're also doing things in between. Falling behind a little bit. So before I would do the illustration for the next day, the day before, and now I'm doing it the same day. So I don't wanna be doing that. I'm hoping to catch up maybe later today or tomorrow. So my filming process is pretty similar to my other Reels video. You guys know I use a phone tripod, but I forgot this when I was going to Maryland. So literally it's totally possible to make Reels and TikToks and stuff without a phone tripod. Like, yes, it's a great tool to have. It makes it easier. I did three Peachtober drawings in a row without a phone tripod, so it is totally doable. You do not need all this stuff. The next few days of the challenge are gonna be super rough, but I'm gonna be showing you how I film everything for Instagram. I have to give myself kudos though, because this is the farthest I've ever gone in the challenge, and I was really thinking about giving up. I really, really was, but I didn't because of like motivation from you guys and this video and all of it because if I gave up, there would be no video to watch. Let's, let's catch up on Peachtober. I'm four days behind on Peachtober right now. Week two check-in, I am feeling burnt out. I am feeling art block. Uh, I talked about this a little bit in my Patreon podcast but I just like feel like I have, every time I try to pick up a pencil, it's like no ideas. I don't really want to paint. I'm not in the mood. It's really challenging to paint every single day. And that's why I like to use like different mediums. I like to do digital art. I've been doing a lot more ceramics so that if I get like tired or I feel like I'm blocked in one medium, I could switch to another one and then like have fresh new ideas coming into it. Yeah, so I attempted to catch up on the days I missed, but I ended up just doing the sketches and not the full-on paintings, but I guess that still counts, I guess. <laughs> I'm your stalker. <laughs> So funny story, the next like week and a half or so was my shop update, which you guys saw in the previous video. So I did not do any Inktober stuff because I was busy designing packaging, taking photos, doing all that good shop update stuff. And then I spent a couple of days packing all your orders. So thank you for your orders. So that meant I had zero time to do any Peachtober paintings. I wasn't really beating myself up over it. It honestly was a nice break because then I kind of went back into wanting to paint again after working on only shop update stuff for that one week and a half. Pro tip, maybe if you do want to finish a month-long drawing challenge, don't do a shop update in the middle of the month. Uh oh, yeah, that's just me though. I did it. I finally did another Inktober drawing. So this broke my seven day no Inktober streak. I think it's been seven days. It might be more than that actually. October 24th, this is today's prompt castle. And that officially means I have one more week to do Inktober because it ends October 31st, next Monday. So I could do the rest of this week. I will be very, very proud of myself. I do have the sketches for all the previous ones. So I'll do those eventually, but I did it, I did it.
So in Lightroom, I will just fix up the exposure, color, crop anything, stuff like that. So I usually go into exposure and play with it a little bit. This one is honestly pretty good, so I'm not gonna do too much with it. Okay, I usually like to go into color. So here you could change like the temperature. I might make it a little bit warmer, just a touch warmer. I like to pull up the vibrance and I do try to be careful with saturation. I don't wanna make it too saturated. So around just like a touch touch more colorful. So I could change the hue just slightly. I think I want this to be a little bit more pink and not as saturated. Um, I think I want this to be more of an orangey pink rather than cool tone pink. Now I'm in Procreate where I'm gonna fix it up, add text, stuff like that. And I do wanna make this a square shape, I think. So I'm just gonna resize this canvas. completely changed this. Um, I wasn't feeling that pink background, so I just made it like a neutral tannish beige color. I like moved the cat around, added text, and I'm really happy with it. Here is, here is the other one. And I think this one's really cute too, so. Got those posted, and we are good for today's Inktober. <laughs> This is my favorite and last painting of the month and at last guys I'm going to give you an update on how I edit my reels with Adobe Premiere Pro in conjunction with Adobe Express, the sponsor of today's video. I have a Premiere Pro file created here where I've been uploading all my Inktober footage by folder to keep it organized. And I'm using the vertical workspace because obviously this footage is vertical, so you could see it a lot better. You could change your workspace by going to the top right corner and there will be a list of different workspaces. So I'm dropping in two to three second snippets of each clip onto my timeline and then later just watching it over, cutting clips where I want them to be cut. If I had a specific song, I would screen record it on my phone, send it to my computer, and then add in the music here. But I think for this one, I added the music after the fact. I just kind of found a song that worked. A lot of you guys ask me how I find music and that's pretty much my answer. It's kind of like up in the air. And then I will take the text from my previous video and just copy and paste it into the sequence and just like change it up a bit. Once that is all done and I like it, I'll grab a screenshot and then I will export this file. I'll then take that screenshot into Adobe Express to create my Instagram Reel cover and pretty much just duplicate my last one and add the text onto it. And it's just like as easy as that. Adobe Express is the perfect tool to accelerate your workflow and the premium plan is already available with your Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. Check it out with the link below. And I know this was kind of a quick tutorial on Premiere Pro and I'll leave some additional resources below too. I was deciding here if I should add sparkles, but then I just decided to keep it simple and take the sparkles out. So I exported this image and then took this to Instagram where I am posting the reel, finding music as you can see here. Finding music part took the longest. Um, but yeah, after I was happy with the music, it kind of matched up 
semi well, then I went to upload my cover image and you'll see why I have the text all the way at the top in the cover because I don't want text in my Instagram feed. So I'll crop it to a point where I like. So now it looks good in my feed if you're particular about that. And yeah, then just was ready to write out the caption and this reel is all good to post. And it says easy as that guys. Ooh. Update, October 30th update. I decided that the last painting you guys saw me do was going to be my last Inktober painting. On top of everything else I've been illustrating, I just could not do any more Inktober drawings. I wanted to show you November's Patreon awards, so I've been working on this the past two days. We have a nice dragon print and then a bookmark and clear sticker. So yes, I have still been drawing every day, just not for Inktober. So I'm still counting these final days. The last thing I wanted to do to end off this Inktober saga was to create prints for all the paintings I did this month. So I scanned them all into my computer and then edited them in Photoshop to fit four by six postcards and then eight by 10 prints. And they came just in time for this video. So let's unbox them. In one of the eight boxes behind me, there are the Inktober prints and uh, the other ones are memo pads. So let's try to guess which one is Inktober prints. What the memo pads are, you'll just have to wait until the video that comes out about them or they might be on my shop by then. I don't know yet. Let's try this first one. Okay, these are memo pads. Um, so not the Inktober prints. The Inktober prints are the postcard size it looks like. Oh, wow. Oh wow, oh wow. First, I see the November Patreon bookmark and print and they look amazing. Oh my gosh. They look so good. I got these printed on, um, I think it was, the recycled mat. Wow, they feel really nice. I'm glad I got the mat because you can kind of see more of the paint marks. There's a little bit more texture. That looks so good. Wow. I am in awe. So I got all of these as eight by 10 prints. And then I'll show you the postcard ones in a second. Oh my God, this is so exciting. I think these are the last two. Whoa. The postcard ones are six by four and then have um, postcard stuff on the back if you did want to send these. That is more of a glossy satin finish. But here they are as postcards. And I'm gonna do these as a postcard set. Um, and then maybe put them up individually, I'm not sure. Whoa! Oh, this one looks so good. So, made it to the end of the video, and the question is, did I complete these four goals this month while painting these 16 paintings? And I would say I did. 100% yes, I definitely think I improved my gouache painting skills. I feel so much more comfortable with my brush strokes more used to the medium and overall I feel like my process for painting has improved a lot. Always like I always mix up digital art and traditional art but I'm finding like my love for traditional art to be stronger than ever so yeah definitely goal number one yes storytelling skills so I went into this 
wanting to make each piece kind of like a snapshot of a larger story. Um, and it was really fun for me coming up with all these concepts. And I really, really think that I improved my storytelling skills immensely, especially with the composition of the piece, with color, all of that good stuff. So yeah, I did think I improved on my storytelling. Did I improve my social media game? Um, I would say yes to that one too. Did do a reel for all the pieces that I created. And I think I really got my reels process down because that changed a little bit since my like last reels video. Kind of figured out how I like to use Adobe Premiere and Adobe Express together. I think overall you guys really enjoyed the painting reel. So I would say, yeah, that, that, one, that one's a win too. And number four, find new artists. Of course, I found and followed so, so many talented artists. So many of you guys were also participating in various Inktober prompts and it was really cool to see everyone join together for the whole month. And um, I was looking through the hashtag all the time and yeah, just finding new artists. And I hope you guys found some really cool artists this month too. Okay, so would I attempt Inktober again next year? I would say yes just in a different way. I wouldn't do a full-on painting each month because I think that is really what contributed to my burnout. Like, I don't think painting every day for four hours is sustainable for 31 days at all. I think that's it. <laughs> Subscribe to my channel if you liked this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.